Hey everybody, Tarbugget coming at you with the mid-level gaming build. Just follow the builds and you will win. I, you can take your own take on them as well. You don't have to follow them 100% exactly. We're going to start with the showcase here of the mid-tier build with Duriel. Just about any build could kill this thing. Uh, Duriel or any of the tormented bosses are really, really good. But uh, shouts pretty much just kill him again. Um, wait, wait till he. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, and <laughs> that's Duriel. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show you guys Duriel is because this is how you're gonna farm your uniques and things. You could do this with the level one through eighty-five build that I have um, in the description there. And that's what I was saying. Just go ahead and follow that. You go in there, you get the uh, uniques and stuff that you're going to actually need for this. And that's that goes for any of the regular bosses out there, uh, just not Duriel, um, to get the other things that you actually need, like the Rage of Haragoth uh, breastplate or or whatnot, like we have on um, the Wake. Oh, well, no, actually, I don't want to get that. Um, yeah, this breastplate, that thing. Um, we'll be going over there in the Butcher's Cleaver. There's nothing. These are just regular uniques. None of them are mythic or anything like that. What did he give us? He gave us a flicker step. All right. Um, the other thing is you're going to want to get some pit materials here. Now, the, the new meta right now is to not run pits, but to run the Infernal Hordes. But... You're still going to need some masterwork material before you actually take on the hordes um, or actually get a lot of uh, materials. So I'm going to go go ahead and show you a pit to um, best one to probably do. Let's see here. Is let's see here. That's Ingolith at 31. Um, I'm guessing level 51. I'm just trying to think of what max this this could actually do currently at this time in the mid game season without without, you know, banging your head against your keyboard. So let's just try a 51. This will give you the mats that you actually need to um, go through the pit. I'm, I'm sorry to get to the end game. So let's let's see what we have here. So our main focus on this build is to make our twisters do as much damage as possible. And that's what we're focusing on. Uh, there's there's another part of this build where if you don't have enough armor, you're gonna probably need to masterwork your armor or you're going to just need to drink a, a thorn potion. That's pretty much it to get your armor. Uh, the Paragon tree is gonna be a little bit funky specifically because it's giving you your resistances. So where's the mobs by the way? Are they even? Do we even have any mobs? Uh, hello? Yeah, uh, just to get your resistances. There they are. Jesus. Um, just to get your resistances up because you... Um, I did build it in survivability on this build. So the great news is you have a lot of good survivability. On this build. I better uh, cast my skills and stop talking a little bit too much. But you have a lot of built-in survivability. So that way you can do this content easily with one hand. Uh, while you're sipping on your coffee or tea or whatever. Watching uh, YouTube. Mindlessly going through uh, a couple of pits just to get materials. And that's what we're kind of doing right now. I'm kind of like just talking. Um, putting this remember where we're also tapping the whirlwind so we could get more whirlwinds or I'm sorry twisters we got a lot of a lot of shrines here the pits are gonna go a little bit slow at, at this time because I I took some of the speed away um, to put into more uh, damage reducing skills and stuff all right, I don't know where all the mobs are at, but this is kind of uh, spread out. Wow.
Here we go. Finally got a group of a decent mobs here. All right. We ran around for about a good 15 seconds there. But this is not a speed thing at the moment. But as you know, we can still do this one. We still, you still got to be a little bit frosty on uh, these bosses here. So what I do is when he does that, I kind of run around a little bit. When he's about to grab me, I also run around because the grabbing hurts. And you can see that's what happens if you if you're not completely frosty with it. We just tossed another 30 seconds there. But this is a uh, this is a real showcase, guys. Unedited, just straight into it. I don't want to give you any bull. I just want to show you what you could actually do. So maybe taking this down uh, just a couple of levels instead of a 51. Hey, do a do a 46. I think a 46 would be super easy to do. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. I gotta watch myself. Okay, if I could get him stunned. You know what? Every time... Wait, this is this just happened two times in a row. Does he do some kind of weird mechanic right there? Right when you're about to stun him? That's kind of weird. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll run around. I'll run away from him when he starts to stun. Because that's... That was very odd to me. Okay, so right when we're about to stun him. Oh, oh, that hurts. Yeah, that's the that's the thing that hurts. You see how I got my hit points? Okay, there he's he's stunned. Yeah, that's just just weird. Bad RNG. I would say uh, probably. Oh yeah, get away from those things. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I would say probably let's just take it down to maybe a 46. Um, I'm gonna try to finish this guy off, but I'm not gonna run a 46 since you guys are actually watching. Um, as I stated, this is just a live showcase, uh, no bull crap showcase. As you could see, struggling a little bit with 51s. I want to get away from this bit boy, and I need. Ooh, those are those are the things I hate. I hate those things. They're bad. Okay, he's about to get stunned, so he's gonna do some kind of weird mechanic that one shots us. I don't know. It's. I don't know if that's it. Yeah, there we go. Freaking weird, man. That's all I got to say about that. Try to pour as much uh, DPS into him as we can while he's down on the ground. Okay, he's about to do some. Yep, he was about to do the grabby grabby. So when he lifts up those uh, hentai looking. Oh, gosh, this looks like a bad area. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get away from those. Get away from him. He's stunned again. Let's pour it on him. Yeah, so you could do a you could do a 51 or whatever you feel comfortable with this one. Uh, I think I'd rather just you know kick it down from a 51 to something else. Uh, but that was that. And let's see here. Is there anything else that we really need to do? Now we could do a. We could, we could do a Infernal Horde, but I want to keep the video short because if we do an Infernal Horde, that's going to take us, what, 10, 15 minutes. Um, so I would say an easy Horde to do. You could do a Tier 5 with this, but I would think the easier one is just to go with a Tier 4 Infernal Horde. So here's a Tier 5, which uh, that can be done. But I would say just go ahead with a Tier 4 to make it easier. Um, that, of course, gave us our crafting materials. Uh, that's the only reason why I was showing the pit. So that way we could go ahead and masterwork this. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and get into the gear and things of that nature. First thing. Gear. Here we go. Your expertise. Two handed axe. Easy peasy your skills let's go ahead and just do the skills here you're gonna put two points up here lunging stripe preferably 
uh, Whirlwind, go to Enhance Whirlwind. You have Rallying Cry, go to Strategic Rallying Cry. Iron Skin, go to Strategic Iron Skin. Then you have Challenging Shout and go to Tactical Challenging Shout. War Cry, you're going to go to Power War Cry. You're going to put three points into Booming Voice, three into Raid Leader, two into Guttural Yell. One point in aggressive resistance, so you could get to prolific fury to get three points into that. Also, pit fighter three points, no mercy three points. You have your hamstring one and three to cut to the bone. We have the aspect of berserk ripping, so this way this will be um, used every kill, everything that we do. Uh, thick skin one point so you can get the counter offensives and put three points there everything will make sense um once you see the gear heavy handed three into there wrath of the berserker all the way down to supreme wrath of the berserker and then also gushing wounds we did try out unconstrained but it didn't work as far as dps wise because we are still focusing on some some bleeding and it's actually a lot of bleeding so gushing wounds right there your skill assignments down here on your whirl whirlwind, you're going to put your pole arm and Wrath of the Berserker. This is your flex spot for if you need deep, if you need uh, fury. You put down this, put it to do a wield. If you're running out of theory, use lunging strike so you can get your fury back. Most of the time, you will be using Wrath of the Berserker. And of course, you're going to put your iron skin down here, your war cry, rallying cry, and challenging shout. All right, now here's the gear. This is where things are going to make more sense. Tusk Helm. We found this uh, in a hell tide. <laughs> Damage while berserking, movement while berserking, everything while berserking. So we need a better one of this. This is only 46% out of 60, but it's still good. Uh, Rage of Haragoth, level 900 item. Of course, we would like a 925, but this is what we got. That's going to be just critical strike chance, damage reduction, stuff like that. Damage over time is actually going to be your bleeding as well. Your gloves. I rolled an armor right there. Now, that's what I made my flex spot right there on the gear armor. I could re-roll that one to something else, like maybe vulnerable to enemies or something, or lucky hit to vuln, stuff like that. We do have the berserk ripping on it, so that way will whenever we do deal the direct damage while we're berserking we're gonna flick the the bleeding that we're talking about you have tybalt's will for damage reduction on your pants also arachnoth's wake now you could use this one's this one was kind of hard to find i found this one out in the world uh if you don't have this then you're just gonna want to go ahead and put boots on with um you don't necessarily have to have movement speed, uh, but you're going to want to just put something else there pretty much. Uh, but this is good because of the cooldown reductions, et cetera, et cetera, and the extra uh, damage you do when you're exploding. Because we, we did a test on this, and when you're actually um, cast... Oh, well, actually, my bad. This was the wrong thing I was thinking about. This is when you cast a skill with a cooldown, which is basically almost everything that we have. Uh, you're going to go ahead and explode dealing that extra fire damage. These, that's a, this is all a cooldown. This is a cool, 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 cool. See, all of these are cooldowns, all five of these. And this one's not. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, conceited Dread Mace. So conceited, so you could do 50% more damage. I still need to find a better conceited there. And by the way, this build does rely on you having... To get the maximum damage conceded here and fierce wins here we purposely did this so remember you want to copy conceded here fierce wins there then you're going to go ahead and put devilish here on the blade that you have on the pole arm that's where the fierce winds comes into play now butcher's cleaver not many builds have this this is great this is actually going to have a 100 chance to fear and slow enemies 83 percent of those enemies now this is going to give you an extra critical strike chance 
against the feared enemies that you fear. Look at that, it's huge. Right now, this is only a 23. If we get a better one, it could be all the way up to 28. And as you can see with our stats, our critical strike chance is 51.7. With this, once we fear them, it's gonna be another 23% critical strike chance on top of that. So that will be 73, 74 almost. Critical strike chance, awesome for a mid-tier build, right? Yes. All right, uh, let's see here. Amulet, we have the Dust Devils here purposely. Remember, I have these aspects in certain places on purpose, so don't really try to move the aspects away. Um, you'll feel a lack in everything. And then Bold Chieftains on the ring and circle of vocalized in or i'm just vocalized empowerment on the other ring that is your gear setup remember your key points this is why i rolled armor on this and i want to re-roll this one because you know we're kind of overkill on this but we're going to go with we have you want to get your armor up to that 9230 and you're going to want your resistances up now the resistances are going to be up from the uh the trees if you notice we're just over you want to have 120% on all of these. We're at 126%, 131%, 130, 140, and 130. This, this all falls into the Paragon tree we're about to go over. All right. Oh, one more thing. Um, you'll see that on my build that I actually have a chance to cast twice on this one instead. But I had a good roll of Dust Devil damage here, so I left it. And then I went ahead and rolled Dust Devil's chance to cast twice on this one. You actually want to try to get twice over here, and you want to get Dust Devil damage over here if you can. Um, but either way, if 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 it rolls this way for you, just let it be. Just let it be. Just make sure you have Dust Devil size right here, because you don't need to be any bigger, because you're only going to have forty percent on this one from the aspect and then this you just need a little bit you don't need to make these bigger we specifically have the death double damage here for more damage and we specifically have the shout skill here for more damage all this is doing is giving us two more dust devils um and we don't want to put the size here because the size would be tremendously huge but if you add the 40 and you add the Dust Devil side here, that's 72% Dust Devil size bigger. Plus, it will be bigger once you masterwork this to 12. If you masterwork it to 12, if you have a good item there. So, very specific about this build. It's not hard to do. Just follow those directions and you'll win. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the Paragon tree. Now, remember the, the build, this is in the description. So, just uh, follow the link build. And we're going to briefly just do some key points on this right here. The first glyph is going to be your exploit. Let's go ahead and put exploit there. Your second board is going to be the weapons master board. And here you're going to put might. Your third board, you're actually going to come over here to this one to make this one the third one. And that will be... Where's the thing? Uh, Blood Rage with the Disembowel. Now on the build, on the tr on the link build, you'll see that I think I put this one next or something of that nature. But in reality, you want to try to put this one next. But it doesn't matter because we're still hitting the dexterity here. We're still hitting uh, the dexterity over here. But as you can see, we have 472, so 470 dexterity. We would meet it either way. And then over here, willpower, we would meet the willpower. So if you switch these out, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, so just for um, purpose, I'm going to show you the way that would probably be better. Because I don't want to go back and just change that. It's just too much work. This is a lazy build, and I'm a lazy person. All right, so this board, this is going to be your third board over here. Did I do this right? 340 dexterity. 420. No, this is your third board. Okay, I switched these out, so never mind. This will be your third board. 
Um, we are into the Warbringer tree, and then you put Twister on there. This one's actually a huge one. Look at that damage on that one. Oh, by the way, yeah, get your glyphs to 21. So the level 1 through 85 build will allow you to get your glyphs to 21. Over here, we have the Flawless Neck Technique with the Blood Feeder. And then you're going to go all the way over here and use the Hemorrhage Board. And then that will be all your points. <clears throat> now, remember, I was talking about resistances because... I know some people are going to complain. Why do you have all this resistance stuff over here? Well, because I wanted to get my armor and resistances up. As you can see, there's a lot of nodes in here with resistances. There's a lot of nodes in here with armor, things of that nature. See there, lightning resistance, 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 lightning, resistance, armor. This one has armor. Uh, also, we put uh, this here for more armor. And look, we have more armor, but we had to do this. So that way we could actually get to our armor and whatnot cap. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Infernal Hordes tier four. Um, I'm going to tell you the easy ones to do. So if you want to push it, go to, go to pit 51. Tier five hordes. If you want to be easy, go to pit 46. And just tier four hordes. But you could farm all this gear. Easy peasy. This will allow you to get the end game stuff that we'll be posting up soon. Hopefully this week. It depends on if we do get the gear. The first thing you're going to try to want to get is the Tyrael's Might. My God, when we get Tyrael's Might, we're going to be killing it. Um, but as I'm leveling up and doing things, um, running the hordes, I'm going to go ahead and get these a couple of these leveled up. But hopefully we get some good drops. Other than that, please like and subscribe if you guys haven't yet. And I appreciate you being here. Catch me on the live screen stream if you can. Y'all have a great one.